Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today we're discussing episode 4, Plus and Minus the Taiwanese BL Drama Series. This episode opens with Fu Li Gong leaving the pub because he's tired of the king game. It's basically kind of a repeat of the end of episode 3, where he's imagining that Zing is coming out and passionately embracing him, which does not happen. However, Zing does follow him out, and he says, You know, it was no fun. The vibe was just off when you left, so I'm leaving too. And I promise I won't take you to these parties anymore, since you don't seem to like them. And he then takes Fu Li Gong back to their old school, and he crosses over the little gate and goes to the school and so the guy's like why are we here and zing's going well we're here to wax nostalgic about our youth i'm going your youth it was like 10 years ago you were here so um talk to me in 20 anyway i have the same conversations with some of my friends i'm like yeah okay when you're 60 70 80 90 we'll talk about being old but when you're in your early 20s we're not talking about being old <laughs> but anyway so i think when zing and fuli gong go back to their old high school zing stops and he says you know it comes to mind that i have for our entire time together always dragged you around places and whether that's the noodle shop, whether that's to parties you maybe don't want to go to. And I'm sorry, I maybe shouldn't have done that. But I, I like having you with me. I like having you there by my side. You're my buddy, basically. Bad buddy. I'm, I'm joking. Okay, anyway, sorry. Little, little segue. But moving on. The, um, as they are there at the school, Fu Li Gong and him were on the roof and Fuli Gong says, you know, I don't even really know what happened to all our classmates we had, even though it's only been, you know, 10 years. And Zing's going, well, I don't really know what happened to him, but I think we're the only ones that haven't ended up with someone. Even Stone, who nobody thought anybody would end up with, has ended up with his partner and two girls. And I'm going, I wonder if they're talking about East Stone, because we have um, I Do Be Loved in House. We have the two characters of Shi Li and Jing Ye Zin in the next episode, I believe. So I'm going, I wonder if they're talking about E Stone. I don't know. It's just kind of a neat little thought there. I'm going, that would be interesting to kind of know what happened to E Stone. But anyway, moving on. So Stone has two, two kids, and um, Jing goes, You know, one of our friends scared the night guard so much they thought he was she was a ghost. And I wonder if she does that with her husband now. And Fu starts kind of laughing. They then go to the classroom, and they're talking about the night that Fu Li Gong turned 18, and Jing gave him that keychain, and he gave Jing that book because he didn't want to give him the matching keychain because he thought, you know, I'm just not ready to do that. And Fu Li Gong sitting there 10 years later, a decade later, going kind of, I think, when he's looking at that wall, thinking about the past and how um, Jing kind of fell asleep in a drunken stupor after saying, no, I can't read any more books, bushy, bushy, bushy. But anyway, he's sitting there going, I'm kind of in the same spot mentally as I was 10 years ago. I mean, we don't have this huge little diatribe that he does, but he's just sitting there looking at the wall going, things really haven't changed for me and my emotions in 10 years. So anyway, he and Jing go home. We then segue over to Yuki at the bar as he's finishing up, and he's the one who started the King Game. And I think I finally have gotten over Yuki. It's taken me seven episodes, but over him and he was kind of a bit of an angst character because I'm going what is his why I mean when I watch a show it's like forget people's actions the why behind those actions is what is really really important maybe it's because I'm a high function autistic I don't know but anyway when I'm watching this show plus and minus in this episode I'm going with Yuki in the king game I don't think he did it to be a bother. I think he really did that because he wanted to see what Fu Li Gong would do. He's basically, I think, trying to put Fu Li Gong in a place where he has to act. 
because I think Yuki's been watching him for quite a while going, he needs to make a move, and he could spend his entire life not making a move because he is terribly freaked out about the ramifications of that move. But what if I put him in a situation where he's forced to sit there and go, what would happen if Jing ended up with someone else? Oh goodness, would that be enough to make Fu actually do something about his emotions? Again, I might be breathing too much into that whole episode, but I really think that was kind of what Yuki was thinking. Because he's a very he's a very calculating person. And when I say calculating, I don't mean as in he's trying to do something to cause harm to others. I think he's sitting there going, I know these people really well because I've watched them long enough and I know what they're going to do next if maybe they're pushed a little bit to do something. And not, how this is, I don't think Yuki's trying to push anyone to do something that they don't want to do. I think he's trying to push, for example, Fu Li Gong to do something so he doesn't spend the rest of his life regretting the fact that he never told Zing how he felt. But anyway, you have Yuki sitting there at the pub and he goes, you know, the sun is what brightens the moon and it makes life interesting because even if the moon could shine on its own without the sun, it wouldn't be as cool. It wouldn't be as interesting. And Nikita's sitting there going, what are you trying to say, Yuki? Why are you talking about the sun and the moon? And I think it's interesting because it took me literally four times of watching this, or three times of watching this episode to figure out, oh, he's talking about the laundromat owner. Why did it take me so freaking long to figure that out? I blame lack of sleep. But anyway, for those of you who are listening, if you had the same problem, I don't know what you would have blamed, but yeah. So anyway, but what basically Yuki's sitting there doing is he's saying... The sun and the moon, moon need each other, and even if the sun could shine, or if the moon could shine on its own, if it didn't reflect the sun, it wouldn't be as cool. It wouldn't be as interesting. And I love how he uses the word interesting, because I think you know. In life, we say that we we like people, we like things because they're they're unique, they're beautiful, they're intriguing, but I think. Some of the coolest people I've ever met, I would really describe as interesting because they are curious about life. They always make you kind of wonder what they're going to do next in a good way. And I think Yuki sitting there going, I, I think Yuki's basically saying, I'm the sun. I'm very shiny. People like me because I'm shiny, but I'd rather be with someone who's like the moon, who's going to maybe reflect that interesting nature back because I don't want to be with someone who's shiny. I'd rather be with someone who's not shiny because shiny is just shiny when it comes down to it. So anyway, he's having this conversation with Nikita about the moon and the sun and it reminds me of Take Me to the Shrew. Is it the sun? As Elizabeth Taylor looks up and is kind of playing with Petruchio. But anyway, so Nikita looks at him and he goes, she goes, so what you're saying is maybe if the moon cared about someone, they could become that someone's shining thing that reflects back at them. And he's like, well, maybe, maybe, just maybe. So anyway, at the end of the day, Jing and Fu Li Gong go to work. Um, Jing is trying to help get Mr. Key for criminal activity as well as for his divorce so that Miss Key can be more, actually she's not Miss Key, I forgot her name. She has a separate name from her husband. But anyway, to help her divorce go more smoothly. However, Mr. Key now knows that Zing is working to help his ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife and he's very hacked about it. So Fu Li Gong sits down with Zing and says, you know you need to be careful. You know you need to not be stupid about this because key could hurt you. Key could cause you trouble. So please be careful. Well, simultaneously, as he's having this little discussion with Zing, Yuki is finishing up cleaning up the pub. He comes up the stairs and takes out the trash and realizes he's locked his keys and his wallet and his phone in the bar. And he doesn't have the extra set he thought was in the little hiding place. Well, Mr. Lai Lai comes, Lele, 
I don't know, Lily, Lily, I'm not sure. Anyway, comes up and he says, are you, are you finished with work, Yuki? And Yuki says, yeah, I'm finished with work. He says, well, why don't you come into the shop? If you, if you're locked out, you can use my phone to call to see if someone could come and help you. Well, Yuki goes into the shop. He tries to make a phone call. Nobody picks up. So Mr. Lai says, well, why don't you eat this breakfast? I can go out and get another breakfast. I'm sure you're hungry. And then um, that way you have some food. And he says, are you, are you Japanese? Because of your name tag, I see you have Japanese characters for Yuki, which is a very Japanese name. And he says, yes, I'm, my dad's Japanese, but my mom's from Taiwan, and I spend a lot of my time in Taiwan. And I don't speak Japanese well at all. And Mr. Lei goes, oh, okay, that explains why you don't have a Japanese accent. And he says, no, I, I don't speak very much Japanese at all. And so he gets ready to leave. And Mr. Lai says, why don't, why don't you just nap here? If you can't get anyone on the phone, you don't really maybe have a place to go right now. Why don't you just come nap here? And so he takes Yuki back to the very back of the um, laundry mat where there's a big bed and kind of a room where you can sleep. And Yuki just literally curls up as he's listening to Mr lie talking about you know you can change into these clothes there's a washroom over here if you need to go take a shower just make yourselves comfortable and as mr lies talking he looks over and sees that yuki has completely conked out so he covers yuki up with a blanket and then goes and does his work well when yuki wakes up he tries to go take a shower and he's having trouble with the the faucets i, I know the feeling i don't know plumbing issues they they were an ongoing battle sometimes. But anyway, he calls Mr. Lai and says, I, I can't figure out your your faucet. Can you can you help me? And Mr. Lai's like, yes, this was working yesterday. It should be working today. So Mr. Lai's sitting there trying to fix the faucet. He's like, you know, twisting this, twisting that. And Yuki's watching going, he's, I think Yuki's sitting there going, he's so cute when he's fixing the faucet. But I think it's so funny because I'm like, you know, I, I know everyone thinks Yuki's this very... I don't know why they think he's so, you know, anyway. But anyway, but I'm like, I think it's hilarious because Yuki's sitting there just going, isn't Mr. Lai cute as he's fixing the faucet? And so he's watching Mr. Lai fix the faucet. And at the end of the day, Mr. Lai ends up getting the faucet to work, but it just sprays water all over him. And he steps back into Yuki. And Yuki just kind of grabs him from the back and he kind of pats him and goes, it's okay. And then he turns him around and he takes his glasses off. He dries off his glasses, puts them back on, and then wraps Mr. Lai in the towel and goes, you don't want to catch cold. And Mr. Lai's just sitting there going, no one has ever done this to me. I am not sure what to do with all this instant care of this person who has not only cleaned my glasses, but given me a towel so I don't catch cold and is so calm about everything. And Yuki's just sitting there smiling going, this is funny. And I love how Yuki just sits there and goes, hmm, this is hilarious. In a quiet way, like, I'm just having way too much fun, but I don't want to be laughing out loud, so I'm going to be quiet about this. And that is where we segue into Jing, who is going to go eat dinner with his dad and his sister. But Fu Li Gong cannot come with because he has work at the office. As they are heading back to Jing's dad's restaurant, Mr. Chiki and three guys with baseball bats start chasing him because they want to kill Jing. Now, I will say this, I mean, aside from it being a very violent little image here, I'm going, it doesn't really make sense to honor it because I'm going, Mr. Ki is not only bad, but really, really stupid because does he really not think that people are going to not find out that he killed a lawyer with a three baseball bats I mean really and he's messing with the lawyer with his sister which is even going to make his criminal record even worse I'm like uh, in the broad daylight I'm going it makes no sense whatsoever to Anna as a a crime scene moment and it's one of the scenes that I think is kind of hokey in this episode or in this series because I'm saying they're going what kind of stupid criminal would attack someone in broad daylight with baseball bats. I mean, it makes no sense. Now, I do understand in Taiwan they don't have guns, but still, it makes no sense to Anna. Maybe it's because I watch too many detective shows. I don't know. But anyway, that's where we end because Fuli Gong gets a call from 
um, Jing's sister, who is talking to him on the video chat, and then she says, please come help us, they're chasing us to face our bats. And so, Fu Li Gong is going to go try to save the day. And that's where this episode ends. I did really like this episode. It took me again three times to figure out the sun and the moon quote, and again, maybe that's just my interpretation of it. But I think that after episode seven, which we just had this last week of plus and minus, I don't dislike Yuki as much as I did because I'm like, okay, we know now where his head is at. This makes sense. It's still kind of a selfish reason, but it makes sense more than the other way that I thought Yuki was maybe going. But that is my review of Plus and Minus Episode 4. Check it at the round table. You can watch this on Vicky Rukaton. I believe it's free. It is a, I think it's a Vicky original series, but that doesn't mean that it's not airing on TV channels in Japan as well, because usually they do that. But you can watch it with English subtitles, and I believe they have like six other languages at least this is available in. Check it at the round table. Bye! Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing how you can connect with us on social media and also how you can support us. We are reachable at this lovely podcast on various platforms. We also have several YouTube channels, The Hand Network, Check It Round Table, and also the Asian Drama Club. I will drop the links in the description so you can check those out. You can also reach us online at our website. That's onacar.com. That's O-N-N-A-C-A-R-R.com. You can support us through either PayPal or Venmo. Our PayPal email address is roses, R-O-S-E-S, out of the snow, O-U-T-O-F-S-N-O-W at gmail.com. And you can support us also on Venmo. The the connection for that is at on a car, and that's uppercase O and uppercase C, and it's O N N A C A R R. The last four to verify are 1143. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye.